Hey everybody, Paul from Recording Magazine. Recently, I had the opportunity to travel to Natick, Massachusetts, to the U.S. home of Genelec loudspeakers, to check out the company's new S360A monitors. The S360A are part of Genelec's Master Series. In both size and power, it places them squarely in the mid and far field category, and honestly, a bit too big for my personal mix space. Instead, I spent two days in Genelec Studio both listening to and mixing on these speakers, and you can find out my opinions and results in my review in the March 2019 issue of Recording Magazine. One of the things that I wanted to do, but since I spent so much time playing with and mixing on the monitors that I ran out of time, was to sit down with Genelec's Will Eggleston on camera to find out more about these new speakers. So instead, we had to conduct our interview remotely. So here, through the magic of television, I bring you Will Eggleston, direct from Massachusetts. Will, tell me about the new S360A. Uh, the S360 started off as kind of a high SPL 1032. Uh, we wanted something in that size category that could pump out 5 or 6 dB more than the 1032 and still have a similar LF cutoff. Uh, we weren't looking to make a new near field necessarily, although you probably can use it at four feet or, or so if you're so brave. Uh, but given the way most post-production and the music world has changed, we saw this as a unique opportunity to expand our portfolio uh, to include something we've never done before. Uh, like the ones are a unique and ultimate near field three-way, the S360 I would consider to be the ultimate midfield or far field two-way. I noticed that the S360A's design is a bit of a change from Genelec's more recent aluminum enclosures. What can you tell me about that, and what material is the S360A made out of? The S360 is made from MDF with a heavily braced internal construction. The box weighs in at 66 pounds. It's no lightweight. Why the return to a more classic square MDF enclosure? Inherently, MDF is easy to work with in the R&D department, and the square look fits the outlook of the other Master Series models. Going aluminum may have given us some other design options, but coming down to manufacturing, it would have made it more costly. The enclosure has rounded corners that are radius that helps uh, for edge diffraction or minimize edge diffraction. And the cabin is completely isolated from the mounting surface, which it might be resting on, by this very unique isoplate. Let's take a second to talk about the S360A's new waveguide. In order for this product to present itself as a high SPL product, the tweeter is a custom design 1.7 inch high compression tweeter with a one inch throat. The waveguide has a geometry of a more long throat type. It's very deep, it's very smooth. And we, we refer to this as the extended waveguide or extended DCW. Uh, this combination gives the product beautiful natural off-axis response as well as ruler, ruler flat on-axis response. Next, can we uh, talk about the base driver? Uh, the base driver is borrowed from our master series products that we've been using um, for probably the last 10 years or so. Uh, it's, it's somewhat similar, it's the exact same size as what we use in the 1038 uh, CF, I mean rather AC, the center channel product, but um, we've had other design changes in order for it to work more properly as, as a two-way instead of a three-way. What is the base driver made out of? It's a coated paper. Um, the, the cones and the surrounds themselves are very robust and durable. Anything else unique about the base driver? Uh, in terms of the actual driver itself, um, we'd have to go back probably, you know, 10 years or so when we were first using these drivers in our master series. Um, they're incredibly robust. They're built to be in, quite destructible, and um, they, they certainly are um, what we would, what I would call um, very low distortion drivers. Speaking of bass, I noticed that there are no noticeable bass ports on the S360. Well, that's kind of unique here. I think if you look at the front baffle, um, you can see that there's the uh, absence of any typical ports like you might see on uh, these big 1236s back here. And the rest of our Master Series also has the ports on the front baffle. But these have very large waveguys, as do some of our other three-ways. Uh, but in order to get as much geometry 
um, as possible for this extended waveguide, we needed to move the ports. And no, they're not on the back back here. They are underneath, okay? So those ports actually slot down from the inside and they empty out on the bottom here. And there's one on each side. And there's enough clearance from this isoplate that isolates the enclosure from uh, the isoplate itself. There's enough room here so um, well, the airflow is unrestricted. So what is the benefit of a downward firing base port? Are you worried about low end buildup or surface reflections? No, I mean, you know, base buildup is base buildup. It, you know, these wavelengths are, are huge. So it's really just a matter of making sure that the port has enough distance so that there's no restriction of the movement of air. You know, we have, this is not the first product that we've used downward firing ports with, or what we call laminar integrated uh, ports, or LIP for short. Um, in our M-series product, we've been using this type of port design. The S360A is the entry level into the Master Series. What differentiates the Master Series from the rest of the Genelec line? Uh, it really does come down to size and how much SPL is, is driven by those products. Um, once again, this is smaller than a 1237, but yet obviously it's bigger than a 1032. I would say a 1032 probably comes up to oh, probably about here or so and right about this big. So it's 25% or so bigger than a 1032. Um, but in terms of SPL, uh, it will reach 118 dB, which is, you know, five, 5 dB more than what you get out of a 1032 and almost equivalent to a 1237. So in terms of product positioning, uh, we were really trying to find something which was smaller than a 1237, would have a little bit, would be a little bit easier on the budget than a 1237, um, but yet still be able to crank out the SPLs required and still, you know, remain, uh, you know, the good, with the good Genelec accuracy. How many lines does Genelec currently have? Uh, we have a lot of products. Um, uh, this is a SAM-based product, uh, meaning that it integrates with our Smart Active Monitor of Lines. Uh, there are 20 products in the SAM series. They start with the small little 8320 and go all the way up to the 1236. There are um, 7000 series subwoofers. Uh, we've got different types of coaxial products that form the three ways. Uh, those are called the ones. Um, so, you know, when you consider all of those products that, be, that can be connected uh, via computer and calibrated um, with, uh, with GLM. It's uh, quite an extended family of products. We've mentioned the abbreviations GLM and, and SAM. For someone who doesn't know what we're talking about, can, can you explain those a little bit? What are GLM and SAM? Uh, GLM, or Genelec Loudspeaker Manager, is a uh, downloaded Genelec software application for Mac or Windows that communicates and controls monitors on our smart active monitoring lineup, as I mentioned a little while ago. How exactly does it work? Well, the first thing is you've got to have the products, and then you've got to have uh, the application loaded on your, on your computer. There is a, a small network adapter that serves as the interface between the computer and the products themselves, and that's just a simple USB connection from the computer to the network adapter. From the network adapter, there are Cat5 wires, that go, um, that are basically daisy chained from one speaker to the other, um, you know, and the, uh, the CAT5 wires are supplied with each loudspeaker that, um, that you buy, and the user kit is something which the customer buys from the dealer as well. The user kit includes the microphone, because that's used for calibration, uh, as well as the network adapter. Overall, what are the, the benefits of using the GLM system in SAM monitors? Once the system is set up and you've got all the products turned on, um, the software recognizes what's on the network, and then you basically place the microphone in the listening position, and you click a button, and uh, the sweep tones come out of each loudspeaker one at a time, and it then, um, yeah, it's a little boop, you know, and <laughs> everybody likes that. Uh, so there's a sweep that comes out of each loudspeaker one at a time, and after it collects all the sweeps, it goes back and it reviews um, the frequency response of each of those loudspeakers and linearizes the response from high frequencies down to low frequencies, and it level matches all of these, uh, all the products that are on, on the loop, 
as well as timing delays. So for a simple stereo uh, setup, it becomes kind of obvious that if the microphone is placed in the middle, um, there will probably be very little um, level matching that has to occur and probably very little delay. But you can imagine that if you were to go on to have more immersive events or surround uh, installations, then being able to level matching and delays becomes much more important. For someone who's looking to outfit their room with Genelec, how would they navigate each series or pick the best model for their needs in space? Well, that's, that's kind of a loaded question. Uh, the good news is that we really don't make good, better, best. Um, when you get down to something as small as an 8320, I would have to say that that's probably the best in its class. Uh, when you get up to something like a 1236, again, um, inherently, uh, the engineering group has, you know, blinders on. They are focused, laser focused, on trying to get the most out of any size product that, that we make. Will, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and give us the inside scoop on the S360A. To find out more about these monitors, be sure to check out my review in the March 2019 issue of Recording Magazine. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like below, and better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interviews, product comparisons, tutorials, and more. Also, be sure to stop by our website, recordingmag.com, for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 32nd year. Also, be sure to look us up on social media as well. I'll see you soon.